So on this 20th anniversary of the creation of Nunavut, is it a milestone worth celebrating? Is Nunavut a dream worth pursuing? Joe Saviketa is the Premier of Nunavut, and he's with me now. Premier, good to see you. Thank Thanks you, for coming Peter. in to speak with me. Uh, give us your sense of where Nunavut is at after two decades of this uh, historic agreement creating the new territory. What do you see as the key successes for Nunavut? I think some, some of the key successes is that we have our own uh, legislation that are aligned with Inuit societal values. Our Inuit employment, uh, the percentage has been pretty stagnant, but the numbers have uh, more than doubled uh, in terms of Inuit working for the government of Nunavut. We have our own Inuit Protection uh, Act uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, I think we're doing good. Okay, let's let's talk about this because it, it, you, you've addressed a couple. There are some concerns, as you well know, uh, of people um, dealing with some of the challenges uh, after 20 years. And one of them is that you talked about the workforce. It it promised that the majority uh, of the the workers um, uh, would be would be uh, Inuit, and it turns out it's stagnant. I think it's around 50 percent. What what are you doing to try and raise those numbers up? And also, the criticism is that so many of these workers are in administrative jobs, not, not the key decision-making jobs. So what's the plan to raise those, those numbers up? Uh, I'll go back a bit in terms of the key decision-making jobs there. Okay. Uh, we have 22 members of uh, 22 MLAs within our legislation. All but two are Inuit. We have uh, Cabinet and the Premier, and they're all Inuit, so I would... Uh, I'd argue, I would argue saying the key decision makers are Inuit. Okay. In terms of our Inuit employment numbers, we're working on, we have Inuit uh, priority hire, so if an uh, uh, Inuit candidate for a government job has uh, the same qualification or equivalent equivalencies in terms of experience for the job description, then the Inuit is hired first. There are some people uh, in Nunavut already looking at uh, they're not sure that the last 20 years have delivered what was promised and as you know uh, there are discussions there about whether it's whether it's time to have a, a self-governing Inuit territory. What, what's your view? I'm not sure if anyone knows what that really means because yeah, uh, NTI passed a board motion that they want to study it so mm -hmm. I guess they want to figure out exactly what it means or what it might entail but I think we're very close to an Inuit self-government like I just said we have 20 out of 22 MLAs that are Inuit. All of cabinet, including the premier, are Inuit. So that's very close to an Inuit self-government. I mean, the, ultimately, the cabinet and the MLAs make the decisions on uh, budgetary or legislation acts, and they are Inuit. Let me ask you about um, indigenous languages. Uh, also, we've heard concerns about the, the decline in, in, in the use of uh, Inuktitut and that it's being replaced in many homes by English. Are you worried about that? I think it's it's more of a concern in the bigger communities. If you go out to the smaller communities, Inuktitut is still probably right. uh, is the, is the main language. We still have unilingual Inuit even, but it is more of a concern in the in the bigger communities and I think part of the problem is the parents have to take initiatives to talk to their kids in Like, uh, you go to school when you're five years old, you're speaking a language or a couple of languages by the time you go to school. So if you're not speaking in Institute before you go to school, then it's, it's the parents' responsibility or the grandparents to make sure that they speak in Institute to their kids. And if it's not happening, um, what can you do about it? If it's not happening right now, we have uh, bilingual education to grade three, so it's being addressed in that way. And we have our challenges right now. We were supposed to have offered bilingual education up to grade 12 by this summer, but we're not going to make it because we can't hire enough qualified Inuktitut speaking teachers. What 90% of your budget still comes from, from transfers from the federal government. Do, do you see that reliance uh, on federal funding from the federal government diminishing at all? I don't think it's diminishing, but it's not keeping up with our uh, our needs. Okay, so I guess I'm asking is that you're still reliant on 90% of, of funding from the federal government. Is it, it, I mean, will, will it always be that way? I don't, I, I don't know if it'll always be that way, but in the, for the new future, yes, it'll be that way for quite a while, I say, because we have the highest cost of living, so we can't tax people from Nunavut any more than 
the regular tax right. that they're paid right now, it, it just would not be fair. Like there's food insecurity issues, we have high rent costs and everything just costs more to live with in Nunavut. So in order to generate more revenue would have to be from minerals, which uh, right now we are uh, a territory that don't get any royalties. Mm -hmm. What do you want from the federal government? I mean, part, part of your uh, visit to Ottawa, I'm sure, is to address things, uh, ways you think the, uh, the agreement might be improved. W what do you want to see? Well, the, most, the quickest way to improve stuff is to give us more funds, and we're always asking for that. Like one of the key issues that uh, we need more funds for is uh, housing. We're really lacking in housing in Nunavut. There's a lot of overcrowding issues. And in terms you do have the highest, you have the fastest growing population of any province or territory in the country. That's that's a positive sign, but with it, of course, as you're describing, come, come some problems. Yeah, there's just not enough housing. And another issue is that the, our health care healthcare cost is eating up more and more in the budget as our population grows and ages because most of the health needs, we have to ship people down south to, um, sorry, send people down south to get uh, medical treatment. You've also been quite outspoken, I think, about dealing with um, uh, some of the social issues uh, in Nunavut, violence issues, uh, um, substance abuse issues. Uh, what are you seeing and, and what do you think needs to happen to improve the situation? Uh, one of the things that, a uh, positive thing that has happened is in the 2019 budget, there is money there for uh, addiction treatment center within, within Nunavut. And that is a, is, is a really good first step. Like you have to deal with people's uh, mental issues if you, so that they can get on with their life and get on to more uh, positive and productive uh, issues. And there, you, the region does have a, a high rate of violence against women and children. Um, how do you propose to deal with that? Well, what I've said before, there's usually a root cause for the problem. And you have to deal with the root cross, not the symptoms. Like you can treat the symptoms all you want, but if you don't deal with the root cause of this, of the why there's such violence and why there's a high suicide rate, then that part's not going to change. And I believe that uh, addiction trauma treatment center is a good first step in terms of treating the symptoms of why there's so much violence against women, why there's so much addiction, why there's so much suicide. So uh, let me go back to where I started uh, our conversation. I, I guess 20 years in, uh, is, is Nunavut um, something to celebrate uh, on this anniversary? Uh, still lots of challenges ahead, a dream still worth pursuing. How do you see it? I see this worth, worth celebrating and absolutely it's a, it's a dream. We're, we're partway in, into the dream that we had. We do, the decisions that are made are not made in a far off place anymore. They're made within Nunavut. They're made by Inuit politicians. So the challenges we have is we don't have enough funds to provide all the needs that are needed by the people of Nunavut. So that's our biggest challenge in terms of uh, we're just not adequately funded for it. Like you said, we have the fastest growing population. Therefore, we have the, our needs are growing. As our population age, our health system has more demand on it. Thank you for your time. Nunavut Premier Joe uh, Saviketop, thanks so much. Good to talk to you. Good to see you. Nice to talk to hear and give my message. And just like the rest of Canada know that we're part of Canada up there. We're sparsely populated, but we're part of Canada and we're proud Canadians. And we just need uh, the federal government to do a bit of nation building and uh, give us more infrastructure that's needed because we're flying communities, all 25 of mm -hmm. us. Well, we heard your message today. Thank you. You're welcome.